Jen, uh, Jill has done a brilliant job of framing this upcoming year in terms of legally what it means. But I want to talk to you about what does it mean for democracy? I think that it, it, it's easy to sort of get lost in the cacophony of noise that we've heard around Donald Trump for the past several years, but less, least of all this year in 2023. Can you just put in perspective, hyperbole aside, how big of a year outside of the courts, outside of the indictments and the trials and the actual election, how big of a year this is coming up for democracy itself? Well, one thing that is at stake is the legitimacy of the Supreme Court, because it is so clear that the law and the facts require his removal, that the Supreme Court should consider doing anything else, I think will be the final nail in the coffin of a court that is already in a death spiral when it comes to legitimacy and credibility with the American people. So you lose the credibility of the highest court in the land. That's no small feat. Secondly, should by some chance. Um, Donald Trump not only get on the ballot, but get uh, the nomination and get elected. We will have chaos. We have already seen what he is planning to do. He is planning to create a dictatorship. He wants to round people up and deport them. He wants to use the military to suppress civil disobedience. He wants to use the Justice Department to wreak havoc and to get back at his enemies. He wants to recreate the federal government, stripping out uh, the uh, civil service and putting in his own loyal cronies. This would be the end of American democracy. And if he refused to leave office once before in 2020, do we really think he would ever leave office voluntarily? Early. We have an election, but it could be the last one, and I mean that with all sincerity. Donald Trump does not believe that the four-year term of the presidency applies to him. His attitude is, I'm in power, I get to keep it. That is a complete anathema to our constitutional system. And I must say, it is quite a test for tens of millions of people who still consider themselves to be Republicans, that they should even consider putting him in office. Even if you think, well, there's some wrinkle in the, th in the Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, or perhaps there's this little technicality, why would you put somebody in office who on January 6th sat by in his office and allowed his supporters to ransack the Capitol, to threaten the life of the vice president, and in fact, egg them on to do so? That there is a group of people, in fact, a very large group of Americans who still stick with them is deeply distressing, and it should be to the rest of us. And if we allow that mentality, which is anti-truth, anti-constitutional, anti-rule of law to prevail, we will not have the America that we have known. And I don't say that with any hyperbola or a exaggeration. I don't see how the conclusion could be anything other than that. So we have a number of options here. The Republicans could find their soul and their uh, minds and reject him. The courts could do their business, and he could very well be convicted, not only in the D.C. case, but in the New York case, which we haven't talked much about, which is a real case of election interference, interference in the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, this could be up to the American people. Are they going to vote for this character and essentially choose Donald Trump's tyranny over American democracy? That's what we're going to find out next year. And I cannot imagine the stakes would be any higher. Big questions. And Jill Weinbanks and Jennifer Rubin with bigger answers. Thanks for getting us started on the second hour of Velshi. Coming up.